Hi, I'm Louis Tofari of Romani Tas Press, and in this video I'm going to explain how to prepare the vestments for Mass. Now there are actually no rules or prescriptions for how to set up the vestments. It's mainly a matter of setting them up in a neat and orderly fashion. However, there are four things you do want to always remember when you're setting up the vestments. The first thing is you want to wash your hands. And the reason for that is to remove any oils that are on your fingers, which can eventually soil the vestments. The second thing is you do not want to drag the vestment pieces either across either other vestment pieces or across the vesting case. The third thing is to avoid uh, creasing the vestments, and this is done mainly by always laying them flat as possible. And the fourth thing is to set them up in the reverse order in which they will be placed on by the celebrant. Now if you have difficulty remembering what the reverse order is, you can always look at your vesting card, and the vesting prayer card will actually list them in that reverse order already for you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in setting up the vestments is to remove them from their drawer. Normally, uh, for the traditional Roman rite, um, the vestments that we use are of the Roman style, and normally those are laid flat in the sacristy uh, vesting case. Sometimes they might be hung from a hanger, and that's okay as well too. Um, the main thing is, again, you want them to be as flat as possible. Again, when you're removing these vestments from the case, you want to try to avoid dragging them across either the bottom of the drawer or another set of vestments themselves. So you want to pick them up very carefully. If you notice, I have this kind of taunt. This takes a little bit of practice to get this like this. And if you notice, in this case, I actually have all the pieces I'm going to need uh, all at once. If you want to take them out one at a time and lay them out, you can do that as well, too. Uh, in this case, I actually already have the amice on top for demonstration purposes. Normally, that would be in a separate linen drawer, perhaps. So. Next thing we want to do is we want to lay these vestment pieces all away so that we can then prepare them for the mass. Now, the way we're going to set up these vestments, I'm going to show you two different methods. The first method I'm going to show you is a very simple practical method. As I said, there's actually no real prescription for how the vestments need to be laid out. There's all kinds of fancy patterns that some people will use, and that's just fine. But if you're starting out as a novice, you might want to start with something very, very simple. And that's what I'm going to show you first. After that, I'm then going to show you what is called the IHS pattern, which is very popularly used. So in this case, we're going to actually start with the chasuble. Now, as I said before, it's really important to try to have these laid flat as possible to avoid creasing, especially over time. Um, some of these vestments tend to be rather heavy, like this one here with the embroidery work or because of the silk fabric being used. Um, if you're gonna set the vestments out overnight, I always suggest laying them out uh, as flat as possible. Don't fold them in anticipation for how the celebrant is to, to enable him to easily put them on or more easily put them on. Just, just lay them out flat. And the reason is if, if you do get into a habit of laying them out overnight and you fold them back in different ways, creases will start appearing on your vestments, which you definitely want to avoid. Um, so the first thing is we have the chasuble. And of course, the classic Roman chasuble, the front side, uh, is usually got a violin style cut on it, you might say, whereas the back side tends to have more of the ornamentation like the emblem or such. Now we're going to lay this down in the, in the way so that the celebrant can easily vest. So we're going to lay this actually front side down. And if you notice, I'm holding it pretty much by the shoulders here. And I'm going to lay this down as flat as I can. And if you notice, I tried not to drag it across the case. This is really especially important if you're um, Chasuble and the other vestment pieces have raised decorations on them, whether it's uh, embroidery work, it could be even uh, gems or jewels, um, it could be the trim, because this can not only scratch your case, but it could also over time damage the vestments. Now, you'll notice right here, we have these two ribbons hanging down 
that are connected. They're actually one ribbon connected. And this is there so that the chas front of Chasuble doesn't want to flap in front of the celebrant uh, as he is uh, saying mass. With these, just lay these in a nice little parallel way, just so they kind of look nice and neat. And I'm going to take this back and do this again. A lot of people like to do this because then the celebrant can just like lift this up over his head. But again, I caution you, if you do this over time, you will see creases appearing in your vestment. So I very much dissuade you from, from doing something like that. So the next piece you're going to set up will be the cincture. And in this case, the cincture is placed on in such a way that he actually will put it on with the loop to his left, okay? So in this case, what I want is the tassels to pretty much be even. If you notice, I'm also trying to be careful that they don't drag on the floor. You, you don't want to drag vestment pieces on the floor. Um, obviously, they'll get dirty, plus they're sacred. They've been blessed and everything. So in this particular case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this loop already on his left. Probably doesn't really matter much for the celebrant anyways because when they pick it up they resituate it around and then if you can if you want the tassels to hang nice and neat next piece i'm going to put on will be the maniple that's that's actually the next piece he puts on um, some of the maniples um, have like an elastic or a tie right underneath other of them will have like a little tab sticking out and that's for a pin to go in or sometimes they don't have anything at all and they just use a pin. If you have a pin uh, for your maniple, uh, my suggestion is you kind of stick it in just slightly so he can grab it out and, and uh, put it back in right away. Um, in this particular case, also you'll notice the maniple is joined. Uh, this is because when he puts it onto his left forearm, that way it doesn't want to creep up on the altar so much. All right, so I'm gonna put this in such a way so that he'll stick his left hand right in immediately. And I'll stick this into the top. And if you notice, I'm also trying to make the fringe look nice. The next thing we have is the stole. And of course, the stole is gonna be placed over the shoulders. You'll notice this stole actually has a linen uh, neck protector. A lot of people like to put these on because it'll protect the stole from becoming soiled from the uh, sweat of the neck. Um, technically, that's actually what the amos is supposed to do. The amos is supposed to be tucked in uh, in such a way to act as a handkerchief, you might say, on the back of the neck. Um, so this is not actually prescribed. It's, it's not required to be done. Um, but the other thing you got to be careful of is if you do put neck protectors uh, on your stoles, not to cover the cross, because this is what the celebrant is actually required to kiss while putting on the vestments. And in this case, the stole is gonna be placed over his neck. Um, with this, because we're just setting up very simple, I'm just gonna put it over here, and when he picks it up, he'll, he'll put it over there. And if I put this up far enough, because this is rather heavy, and it tends to want to slide down. After this, we're now gonna do the alb, which is long white linen garment or tunic goal. And so this is what it's gonna look like. Usually they have ties in the front. They don't absolutely have to. Um, sometimes you might find a kind that's actually already joined. It kind of looks like a surplus with a yoke. Um, some of them might even have a zipper um, and all those are just fine. All right, so the amos, what you're gonna do here, is you're gonna lay it so it goes all the way against the back. And what I'm gonna do with the sleeves. Now I'm not so worried about creasing linen because obviously linen gets ironed, so no problem there. So you can fold the linen and that's not gonna be a problem. And if you notice what I'm doing with the sleeves, I'm just, I'm folding it back like this, getting it nice and neat, and then I'm just tucking it back. All right, and that just nice little presentation there, okay. And it could take a little practice getting used to doing these little folds. Now, with the bottom hem of the alb, what I like to do is very, very simple. I just like to lay it out like this. Nothing fancy like a little triangle or whatever. But if you notice, this looks nice and neat, okay, the way that it is. And also, it's still practical for the celebrant to pick up. I'm also not really worried about creasing this top part even overnight because the last piece that's gonna go on it will be the amos. And the amos, of course, doesn't weigh almost anything at all. Okay, the amos, of course, um, is gonna go over his head momentarily before he places it, and he's, he's gonna tuck it into his collar. And the, the idea here is the alb actually is supposed to cover up 
his cassock, which is considered his street clothes. And that's supposed to go reach all the way down to his shoes. There actually is not supposed to be a gap from the top of his shoes and the alb. But the idea is that the alb is covering the entire cassock. The amus finishes it off all, all on the neck, on the collar. And like I said, if the, if the amus is being put on correctly, um, you really don't need a neck protector uh, on your on your stole. By the way, they also even the stole is actually supposed to be uh, worn back here a little bit, not actually up against the neck. Um, but most priests do tend to wear them up uh, right up against their neck. So the amice, of course, is a square cloth made out of linen. Okay, and I'm going to put this down with you might say the face side up. So it's a side. Usually they'll put a little cross on the top. And it's the, the top stitching of the actual cross. That's what I'm having facing up. Uh, and the reason for that is because the uh, celebrant will actually kiss that. Now, what I like to do with the amice, very simple, just fold it back two little triangles. And then I just take these uh, ribbons. And again, I do exactly what I did with the chasuble. I just make these little parallel lines because he's going to put this on in five seconds. It's all going to be over. So, um, some people like to do little fancy things and everything. That's, that's how I do that. All right. So, that's a very simple, practical manner to set up the vestments. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a little more fancy way to set up the vestments before mass. We're gonna do what's called the IHS pattern. And we already have the chasuble here as we did before. Uh, again, the ribbons I just do very simply anyways. Chasuble is front side down. All right, so the next piece we're gonna put on is gonna be the stole. Okay, a little different than what we just did earlier because we're gonna do this from top to bottom from bottom, to, from top to bottom, I should say. And also, this is gonna be in vertical order versus horizontal. So, in the more simpler set, I showed you how he would vest from right to left, and this is just from top to bottom. This is my H, if you see what I did with my stole, I've actually bent it back like this, placed this on top. Now you can say right away, why sometimes I'm not in favor of this style of, or this method of vesting, because you're going to be creasing the stole every single time you set up the vestments, especially if they sit there overnight, all right? Um, then after that, you're going to have the maniple. And again, I wanna have it so that for the join part, it's facing already to the left, so that way uh, when he just he can just put his arm in, especially if he gets used to you laying out the vestments a certain way every single time. Then I'm going to take the cincture, and I'm going to do, that was my I, that's my H, and this is going to be my S. I'm going to take the tassels, and you notice I kind of fanned them out there so they come out nice and neat. And there's my S. Okay, so there's your I, H, S. Very simple. After that, you have your alb. And it's gonna be set up the same exact way I did before. I don't do anything different for that anyways. And the main thing is to try to get this open all the way to the back. You might have to tuck it a little bit. The alb can be a little tricky. It takes a little while to get used to doing the alb and in a very graceful manner. For some people at least. And then again, I don't do anything really super fancy with the alb, I just do that. Then we have the amice, 
And again, as I did before, you want the front side of the cross facing up. Now this is the back side. I'm going to turn this around. So usually it's also the finished side of the hem is what we're looking at. They were made correctly. Okay, I'm going to bring these back, the two corners. Touch it down just a little bit. Put the ribbons parallel to each other. And then I'm done. And that's the famous IHS pattern. Okay, the next thing we're going to review is how to set up the chalice veil and the burst on the chalice assembly, and because those are part of the vestment pieces of the set. Of course, to do that, you also have to set up the chalice linens as well. Just a brief word about touching the sacred vessels. Um, normally, the sacred vessels should not just be touched by anyone. Um, you should have specific permission, uh, generally from the pastor, to be able to touch the sacred vessels, the chalice and the patent which have been consecrated. Now, it's not a mortal sin to touch them. It's just something that shouldn't be done. Uh, and it's out of respect for the sacred vessels. Now, if you have permission to touch the sacred vessels because you happen to be the sacristan or even the master of ceremonies or you're charged with cleaning them, then you may touch them, obviously, with your uh, bare hands. I happen to be uh, not only a sacristan but also to uh, clean the sacred vessels, so I've been, uh, had permission to do that for a very long time. The first thing we have to understand about the chalice is that the chalice will usually have marked for the front side a cross or maybe a scene of our Lord's Passion or something. That's important because that'll help you to uh, align the chalice veil especially correctly. Now, the corporal itself, which is the most important of the sacred linens, well, in fact, the pall is actually part of the corporal, you might say, that goes inside the burse, and the burse literally is just like a purse, okay, and that's what's there for holding it. And you actually want the opening facing out. Um, the the corporal is folded in a very specific manner, and the reason is, uh, especially after Mass has been celebrated on that corporal, as a precautionary that in case there's any sacred fragments left on it. Generally, that almost never happens, but it, it just shows the Church's solicitude for the sacred fragments of our Lord's body. So in case that happens, it's folded in a very specific manner, and it's placed in the burst this way so that if there were any in there as well, it couldn't get shaken into the bottom of the burst. All right, and the burst is there, to, again, to, to carry the corporal in a dignified manner. Um, it also helps to show the mystery of the corporal, which represents the burial shroud of our Lord. After this, we have the purificator. It's just a, basically a sanitary napkin, and that's what it's used for, it's for wiping out the chalice, also the uh, priest's lips. And you can tuck that in a little bit. Sometimes um, the altar and rosary society ladies might put a little wedge in there, uh, which helps to tuck it into the cup of the chalice, nice and neat. And then you've got the paten, which of course is just like a plate, and it has the host, and you just want it centered. Um, some of the patents have a ridge on the bottom which help to place it in there a little better. Some don't, so you just have to be careful about that. And then we have the pall, which literally in Latin means cover. All right, and that goes all nice and centered. And next thing we want to do is take the chalice veil. And the reason why we cover the chalice with the chalice veil is to show that it's a sacred vessel. And so when it's not being used, it's kept covered. And in this case, I want to center it. If you notice there, right there with the front of the chalice, I'm centering this. And I let it drag just a little bit to bring it back. And I'm actually going to bring that over a little more. And if you notice, it's covering the entire chalice. And then the burst will go on top of that, and everything's facing forward. Because when the priest goes to take this, all right, he'll actually carry it like this. All right, so everything will be facing forward, and he'll pick it up from the back. Now, if you want to, um, generally speaking, this is the way it's facing 
while the priest is vesting. But in some cases, what they'll do is they'll take it and place it at a slight angle like this next to the set of vestments. And the reason for that is that way, once the priest is done vesting, he can pick it up very easily. My caution to you is keep it a little bit away because you don't want him to accidentally hit it as he's vesting with the various pieces. Okay, another thing I need to show in setting up the vestments, there are occasions where you will not set up the chasuble or the maniple on the vesting case. And the reason is because he'll end up wearing a cope. So he will not put on the chasuble and the maniple until it's time to actually celebrate the mass. Uh, the most common time that this occurs is on Sunday for the asparagus. So you might be asking, well, how do I set up the chasuble on the sedilia, because that's where it'll be, is inside the sanctuary on the sedilia, on the, on the bench of the, of the ministers. And in this case, you are gonna actually break the rule of folding it. And in this case, you could just do it like this because it can be folded down, you can pick it out later. You just basically want it to fit, but it looks nice and neat. And then again with the maniple, just make sure it's so the left side's facing the way it would on his arm, towards the right, okay? And that's simply it. Okay, one last thing we wanna discuss is how to properly store your vestments. Again, it's really important that you lay them as flat as possible. And again, you do not want to drag them unnecessarily. The first thing we wanna do with the chasuble, uh, especially after it's been taken off, is you're gonna actually turn it upside down, you might say, onto the back side. All right, so we got the front side facing up. And the next thing you're gonna do is just lay these vestment pieces flat. Now, generally speaking, what I do is I place the chalice veil first. And the reason for that is because I want that to lay perfectly flat. The burst is already stiff, so I don't need to worry about that possibly getting creased or bent. And then of course the other pieces you can just put like this in whatever fashion you do. Regarding the cincture, I know some people like to do a little fancy little serpentine knot thing. To me, that's completely useless and a waste of time. That's what I do. So it's very simple. Very important, pull out your drawer as far as it'll possibly go. Pick up both ends very carefully. This takes a little bit of practice to get used to. Try to put it in there without sliding across the other vestment set, or at least lift it up. And also you could have a dust cover on top too, which is an, another good idea to do. And then just close your drawer and you're done. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was very informative for you. If you'd like to learn more about the traditional Roman liturgy, please visit my website, romanitaspress.com. That's the word Roman, I-T-A-S-P-R-E-S-S.com. Please subscribe to my free email updates and please subscribe to these videos as well too down below. Thank you very much and God bless.